Hey guys, this is Paul from WMR Racing Development in sunny Stewart, Florida. Today we're going to talk about the proper adjustment and setting of the throttle position sensor. We have a lot of calls from our customers with poor idle, poor acceleration, and overall rough running condition. And most of the time, it's because of an improperly set throttle position sensor. So we're going to show you the correct procedure. I'm going to show you how we do it at the dealer when we PDI the bikes. But you should be able to do it at home as well. Whether you have one of our maps or an OEM map on your ECU, you should be able to know how to set and properly adjust your throttle position sensor. The tools that we need for this job are a T45 Torx bit with a ratchet. This is used to remove the left side engine bracket so that you can have direct access to the throttle position sensor which is located on the left side of the throttle body. A T25 Torx driver. This is going to be used to adjust the throttle position sensor. It has two screws. The next tool is a T30 Torx driver. You're going to use this to remove the seat from the bike. A number four Allen wrench. This is going to be used to remove the throttle position sensor cover. A voltmeter, a pigtail connector, a piercing tool, and this is a very interesting tool. This came off a wiring harness from the same bike and I'm going to use that in this video to show you how this is done. The first step is to remove the seat. Remember, the seat has to slide forward to be able to remove it. Sometimes you got to give it a couple taps, it comes right out. Now we proceed to remove the left side engine bracket. Next step, you want to remove the TPS cover. That's where your number four Allen wrench comes in place. This is your throttle position sensor. Press on the connector, pull out. The next step is very important. We need to wake the bike up. Bikes are naturally sleeping when you're not using them. There's no power going through anything. The only way the bike wakes up is when you hit the starter button, your power relay powers up, the fuel pump relay powers up, the fuel pump operates for a few seconds. But if you don't do anything else, the bike will shut down and go into a dormant state in a few seconds. In order for us to keep the bike awake for the duration of the procedure of setting the TPS, you must do the following procedure. Take our jumper pigtail wire, flip it to ground, use a piercing tool or a back probe and find your regulator rectifier connector. Find the white with the black stripe wire. Back probe it, connect your ground wire to it. You hear the fuel pump priming for a few seconds and your engine ignition mode lights turn on and they remain on. Now we know the bike is powered up and ready to go. And now we go back to our TPS on the left side of the motor. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it by pressing the tab, pulling back. You have three wires in the back, which are clearly marked. Blue on top, orange in the middle, and black all the way at the bottom. The two wires that we want to get the readings from are the orange in the middle and the black all the way at the bottom. Now we take our back probes and go into each wire. Once you have your back probes inside the connector, Remember, orange and black, making sure the leads don't touch with each other. Go ahead and plug it back in. Set your voltmeter to DC voltage on the lowest range that you can get. So it shows you three decimals. Connect 
your black lead to the bottom wire which is the black wire and your red lead to the orange wire which is the middle wire. As soon as you connect your voltmeter leads you're going to get the idle reading for the TPS which is your throttle closed reading which is 0.502 volts. That is KTM spec. This TPS is properly set. Remember, this whole time your motorcycle is powered up by the ground wire connected to the white with black strap wire coming out of the voltage regulator that I showed you in step one. If you choose, you can do that last. You can get your connectors connected into the TPS and then power the bike up. It's up to you. Now, if I open the throttle to the wide open throttle setting, it's going to show us 4.528 volts. That TPS is working properly and it's showing us the maximum opening of the throttle butterfly. If I close the throttle, it should be a progressive number down to 0 0.502 again. I'm going to show you now how to properly set your TPS from scratch. I'm going to purposely loosen up the adjusting bolt, completely get it out of whack. As you see the number changed dramatically. I'm going to tighten the bolt. And this bike should run very, very rough at this point. So let's begin the procedure. Next, we're going to move to the right side of the motorcycle and locate our yellow and red knobs. The first knob you're going to move is the idle knob. You're going to turn it counterclockwise all the way until you feel no resistance from the spring. Then, make sure your yellow knob is pulled out. And you're going to turn it counterclockwise all the way until it stops. Remember, the yellow knob is upside down, so you got to be mindful which way you're spinning it. It has to be counterclockwise. Now, once you've turned the idle knob, which is a red knob, all the way counterclockwise until it almost comes out of the throttle body, make sure there's no resistance on the spring, and you've turned the yellow knob counterclockwise all the way until it comes to a stopping point, making sure it's pulled out, you adjust your TPS until you get a reading of 0.4. It is very important to understand that by turning both knobs counterclockwise all the way, we're taking any pressure away from the throttle butterfly and the throttle pulley. You also want to make sure that you have enough free play on your throttle grip. If you don't have enough free play, if the cables are too tight, you might be exerting some pressure on the throttle valve and it may not be fully closed. So always make sure your throttle grip has free play. At this point, your throttle valve should be at its most closed position. It cannot close anymore. It's set from the factory to go to a certain point and it cannot go past that point. We have a reading, which is a random number. Remember, I purposely moved the TPS out of adjustment. The goal at this point is to move the TPS either way to get to 0.4 volts. We're going to loosen up the screws just enough to have a little bit of tension on the TPS so that when we move it, it kind of stays put where we want it to. The magic number now is 0.4. What that means is that when the throttle is fully closed, there is no pressure being exerted on the throttle valve by any of the knobs or the throttle cables. The number should be 0.4. So we can start going one way or the other. I can see that if I go counterclockwise, my number starts to go up. So I keep going until I get to 0 0.4. I might have to try it a few times 
a little touchy and sometimes even when you get to the desired number once you start torquing those screws it may jump and move a little bit so you always want to go a little bit on the top a little bit on the bottom making sure the number stays right around where you want it a couple extra decimal points is okay as long as you're very very close to that number see how the number jumps a little bit when I tighten it if I go at the bottom it jumps up a little bit If I go on the top it drops it down a little bit once it gets to a certain point it'll stay put zero point three nine five I can round that up to zero point four I'm happy with that number at this point we're gonna go and start turning your idle screw in until we reach zero point five you start turning your idle screw which is the yellow knob clockwise back into the throttle body it may take a few turns Sometimes it's a little difficult to get a good grip. I am turning the screw right now, but I am not touching the throttle butterfly just yet. At this point, I have touched the throttle butterfly. I want to get to 0 0.5. Perfect. Twist the throttle a couple times. Readjust if necessary. A couple more times. And that's your magic number, 0 0.5. Once we've reached the 0 0.5 number, start turning your idle screw, which is the red knob. First thing you gotta do is push the knob in towards the throttle body. And then you start turning the knob clockwise until you get to 0 0.6 once you've reached 0 0.6 you want to roll your throttle forward to release the yellow knob we're back to our idle position which is 0 0.5 let's check it a couple more times push the yellow knob in 0 0.6 roll the throttle forward to release it back to 0 0.5 when you roll the throttle it should snap back to its outer position that means the yellow knob is properly calibrated at this point the motorcycle is ready to be started and then you can manually adjust the idle until you reach about 2200 rpms once we've adjusted the red knob clockwise be able to achieve the 0 0.5 voltage number we proceed to adjust the yellow knob first thing you want to do is you want to push it in and then start turning the knob clockwise remember this knob is upside down so make sure that you're turning it clockwise this knob has detent on it so it may jump from number to number but it's okay, you want to get it as close to 0 0.65 as you can. 0 0.655, if I go one more detent, I'm at 0 0.665, so I'll drop it down. 0 0.652, that's the number. Now you proceed to roll the throttle forward. It should jump back our original 0 0.5 number that we had before. That's our idle number. I'm going to test it one more time. Push the yellow knob in. 0 0.65. Roll the throttle forward. Release it. The bike is now ready to be started. Once the bike starts, you want to adjust your idle knob, which is the red knob, to a desired idle. Typically, you want to have it somewhere around 2200 RPMs, which is going to be somewhere around 0 0.55. Let's fire the bike up.
Okay, we're done. Let's put the seat back on. Let's start the bike up for testing. And that's it, guys. If you follow this procedure step by step, there's absolutely no way you'll have any issues. If you guys need more information, feel free to reach out or go to WMR1.com. Thank you for watching.